We're back on golf today. You may know Jake Olson's story. He lost sight in his left eye before the age of one. Over the course of the next 12 years, he battled cancer in his right eye eight times before losing his vision. But that did not stop him. In 2017, Jake became the first blind football player when he snapped in USC's game against Western Michigan. And guess what? Jake also happens to love the game of golf. Big time golfer, golf fan was out on site at Riviera yesterday, hanging out with the likes of Chess and Hadley, absorbing all the vibes at the Genesis Invitational in Pacific Palisades. And Jake joins us now. It's great to spend some time with you. You faced some incredible challenges in your young life and met them head on. What has given you the inspiration to just keep on trucking? Thanks nice for having me, guys. Um, yeah, no, obviously, you know, my faith has played a big part in that, but Really, um, after I lost my right eye and became completely blind, I just made a promise to myself that blindness wasn't going to rob me of my future or my childhood or doing the things that I love. And uh, that included playing golf. And so almost immediately after losing my eyesight, you know, I started picking up the club. Um, you know, I, I played before losing my eyesight, but obviously after losing your eyesight, you take a few steps backwards. But um, so I you know, started working with my dad, a solution of how he could line me up out there and we could continue to play. Um, and really just made that determination that, again, blindness wasn't going to rob me of this game I love. Jake, the challenges would seem obvious in such a visual sport of playing blind. What is, for you, the, the toughest or the easiest part of this game? Do you know right after impact, feel whether or not you've hit a good shot or a bad shot? For sure. I mean, obviously, the quality of shot you can feel right away. Um, sometimes you can get a little tricky if, if you know, uh, directionally where it's going. But I'd say the toughest part really was learning, um, you know, a new swing or when you're trying to fix something. You know, a lot of times I say your eyes obviously play kind of a safety net of at least making solid contact with the ball. So for a while there in the first couple of years, it was, you know, making big adjustments to the swing. And unfortunately, you know, if there was a big enough adjustment, I could start missing the ball again, which obviously is, you know, 10 steps backwards. But, you know, you kind of have to stick with it um, and continue to play and work on that improvement in the swing knowing down the road you're going to take 11 steps forward. Now, yesterday on the range at Riviera, you gave Chess and Hadley a little bit of your experience. You put a blindfold on him and handed him a driver. How did that work out for Chesson? <laughs> well, at first he was uh, taking some divots. I'm not sure if Riviera's range people like that too much. But uh, it, was, it, was, it was great. I mean, it really was... Um, fun to see him improve throughout the, the five swings he took. He kind of settled it down a little bit. He said he didn't try to swing as hard and just kind of focus on his body and the feel of it. And that's really the important thing of, of really just trying to, to notice and have that, that brain realize where the body is in space throughout the entire entirety of the swing. Jake, I hate three putts, I hate hitting into the water, but I still come back and, and play this game year after year. What made you fall in love with golf in the first place? I mean, so many things, obviously, just the nature of it, the beauty of just being in a golf course and, you know, all the variant uh, different types of golf courses you could play. And, and But really, I mean, I grew up in Southern California, so they say there's nothing like, you know, riding a, a, a surf uh, wave on a surfboard, which is true. But there really is nothing like hitting a pure shot in golf either. And it really is addicting to kind of to go out there and just be able to, to strike the ball and to score on holes. I mean, it, it really is a feeling like no other. All right, you're a Trojan, I'm a Bruin, but we're doing this and so far so good. How about a bucket list course, a place you can't wait to play and maybe we can roll uh, together and, and get some uh, get some licks in on the golf course? <laughs> I've been very fortunate to play a lot of beautiful golf courses. Probably the, the one that you guys would probably be most interested in is right before I lost my eyes, I was able to go up to Pebble Beach, play a lot of the courses up there, but most importantly, Cypress Point. They, they were able to get me on Cypress Point, so I was able to see that one last time, which was just amazing. But... If I had to obviously pick a course, it'd probably be Augusta uh, down in Georgia. That would be just an incredible experience to be able to, uh, you know, the history and just be on the pines all around me. Jake, you've said in the past that it's just your father and you out there. What is the routine like between you guys? Is it a typical, you know, player caddy conversation? What's your pre-shot routine? What's your post-shot routine with your dad? Yeah, well, it's interesting because, you know, there is a there is a painstaking process of making sure I'm lined up correctly, right, so to deliver a good shot, and that has to be done perfectly. But over the 10 years now, or 12 years, I mean, it, we don't really even focus on that part. It's, it's, it's really just a part of our nature now. So there's full trust in him. He's got full trust in me. So that part really isn't our focus. Our focus really is just a normal golfer caddy relationship of 
distance. You know, when we get in the short game or close to the green, there is a little more of a description that has to be given. Hey, we're 30 yards from the pin. We got 20 yards of rough to the green. We're going to probably have to land this, you know, mid 20s. So stuff like that is a little more explained to me. But from a standpoint of just a normal shot in the fairway or off a tee, um, just describe, hey, you know, this is a dog leg left. Or, you know, just play play normal your shot. Or, hey, we're 172 yards out. The wind's behind us. It's a little uphill. You know, so that, that type of, of conversation is just pretty normal uh, amongst us like any other golfer. So I read that you're this practical joker. You, you like kind of kidding your friends. Give us an example of something you do that, that makes you chuckle. <laughs> well, I didn't even know that we did this. But my, when my dad, uh, on the tee box especially, my dad will put the tee in the ground. But beforehand, he'll kind of set my driver down for me to take some practice swings. And I, we didn't even mean to do this. But when he tees up, bends down to put the tee in, his head is probably – six inches to a foot away from where I'm taking my practicing. And a lot of people when they first play with us like gassed every time that happens, because here's this blind kid just swinging driver, full swing, practice swing. And this guy's putting his head probably six inches away. So we like to mess with people that way now. Given that we've learned that, hey, this is something people are nervous about. So they, we, we get pretty close sometimes. Got to love it, Jake. You're clearly a lot of fun. Now, I also read that you met Kobe Bryant in a tough time in your life. You, you were losing your eyesight. Uh, especially in retrospect, since we've lost Kobe Bryant, what did that time in your life mean, especially as a Laker fan? Yeah, no, it was awesome. It was that fall that I was losing my eyesight. Obviously, we, we you guys seen the stories that I was invited into the USC team and how much they were there for me. But also getting that experience, like I said, with the Lakers, I got to sit courtside. I saw on the baseline, so I got to see the Lakers girls one last time, which was an awesome experience. Um, but yes, meeting the Lakers afterwards, and Kobe was the last one in that locker room and spent the most time with us. And just kind of being around him. You know, there were so many people between Pete Carroll, Kobe, um, others that just showed me this competitive nature of just, hey, I don't care what happens. Like, you got to go out there and fight and compete always. Um, find a way. And that's really what I kind of did in life and took that mindset after losing my eyesight that, hey, I'm going to find a way to continue to be a straight-A student, to be a normal kid, to have fun, and to play these sports I love. Jake, you're an inspiration. It's awesome to catch up with you. hope to catch up with you maybe at Cyprus or, or Augusta National at some point down the road. All right, guys. It's a promise, all right? Deal done. A Bruin and Trojan walking the fairways of Cypress Point. Put it down, ladies and gentlemen.